welcome back to Banzer's Yard and today is a is a viewer's request um, I've been asked a few times to do uh, weathering on a carriage and this is especially for Dave who asked yesterday very nicely and obviously being called Dave blah 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 everyone called Dave is a great guy well except for David Blaine I'm not too fond of David Blaine or David Cameron or David Hasselhoff thinking about it but apart from that all Dave's are, are great guys. Actually didn't like the uh, the David Carradine character in Kill Bill. He was a bit awful. But anyway, apart from that, Dave's are great. So first thing we're gonna do is remove the wheels. Just gonna pop these out. And I've also taken off the um, the little NIM couplings out their pockets there, just to make it easier. So just let that, it's easier to, uh, to, to get around. Just remember to, uh, to paint them up. Um, otherwise they look a bit odd because they're bright black and they stand out I'm going to do the roof first uh, but I don't want to get any of the paint on the bodywork so we're just going to quickly mask this up now, there's different ways of doing this um, you know weathering of a, of a carriage there's different states of uh, um, you know pristine and disrepair so this is like a kind of color stage one this is quite a nice one and lots of the sides of these sort of in-service carriages are not going to be too dirty. The bits that passengers can see and touch are going to be generally clean, so we're not really going to do a lot to the sides of these. But the tops, like the roof, obviously that's at the top, and uh, and, uh, and the wheels and so on are going to be a bit mucky, so that's what we're going to concentrate on. So on our roof, we have used a mixture of a couple of colors. I've got a black and a dark brown. I've put them on the screen there so you can see exactly what ones they are doesn't really matter I'm just trying to do a dirty uh, sort of browny black color really but this particular brown is it's quite a really strong pigment so there was quite a lot of black went into there but anyway we're gonna uh, airbrush it very gently on the top now you, again you don't need to airbrush it you can use a paintbrush if you want to don't go too heavy because I'm gonna wipe most of it off in a second anyway but this is just to kind of get a grimy dirty smeared look to the roof just to add a bit of character a bit of texture so we are going fairly lightly with the airbrush which has uh, just got a bit of a blockage there it's better uh, as so we don't need too much we're not trying to cover it we're just trying to get a bit of a bit of grime in there and hopefully as we uh, wipe this back in a minute it'll catch around those raised parts around those um, cross braces or those joins and um, and those little vent pieces and um, and sort of highlight those and just give that that sort of dirty smeared appearance they're actually meant just to wipe this side by side as I'm doing now uh, because that's the way the the rain would run naturally off of the the roof so um, yeah, don't go sort of end to end. It doesn't. Um, it's not the best thing to do. But I think we've managed to to rescue that. We don't want to wipe all this off, so I'm really not going too far to the edge. I just want to leave a bit at the edge. Um, but around those vents, because they're raised, the tissue's not going to uh, wipe those off uh, too easily. So we're going to get lots of sort um, of the paint left in the uh, in the nooks and crannies and, and around those those parts there so just going to continue with that now it might be easier if you do half and half um, because this can dry really quickly and it becomes quite tricky to get off at the end but um, yeah you've probably got enough time the same color left in the airbrush what we will do is just create a few uh, runs and sort of accentuate those runs that come in from those vents water will collect around there run down the side and take all the soot and the dirt with it and that's kind of what we're trying to achieve so we're going to set our airbrush to a really really low pressure 
and so I'm just spraying it on there just to get kind of like a muscle memory just so I know where where the trigger is going to bite and where it's going to start to spray so we really just want it really really gently now this is the part you can't do without an airbrush obviously um, you could do it using oils if you're really really delicate you could possibly do it with a brush uh, if I was painting with a brush I may avoid this step it's not essential I just quite like doing it so we'll go all around the the, uh, the roof and we'll do this on each of those now if it comes up a little bit heavy like this we can just quickly wipe it back and then we can carry on so we'll come back to the roof in a little while we're not quite finished with that now we're using um, brown to do down the bottom on the on the bogies and on the um, sort of chassis now I was going to use the same color as we've used on the roof I did to quickly try it but it's almost the same color as the side of the look of the um, of the carriage and you wouldn't have seen it so I thought I'd just use a slightly contrasting color just to make it easy to see on film so this is um, as a color called brown violet which is a brown color and we're not going to go too heavy with this and all we want to do is is the bogies and all the sort of uh, the gubbins underneath there all those rails and wherever they are uh, brake cylinders and then just a little bit along the bottom of the of the carriage uh, because uh, it's got to be fairly clean we don't want it to do be to be too dirty and mucky for this kind of uh, level of uh, sort of in-service use so once that's sprayed on before it gets a chance to go too uh, too dry we're going to wipe it back ever so slightly just a little bit just give it a bit of character and uh, a few sort of slight runs now because this is just um, not quite dry I can with a soft brush and this is a dry brush if I just drag it down you can see it starts to create a bit of a sort of texture a bit of a run uh, in that um, in that brown violet layer we've just laid on and we're just going to go along the rest of the um, rest of the side and do that now if we get any on that cream section it doesn't really matter we did um, anyway as you'll see in a moment um, it doesn't really matter we don't want it to be too pristine it's going to get a bit dirty but we don't want it to be too mucky because this is a customer coach so um, that's the part that's going to get cleaned more than any other part of that so we want to keep that looking a, a little bit a little bit tidier just going to cover that back in again didn't want that paint to come off of there now you don't need to use this color as the same um, lots that I've seen look, look really nice I use the same colors on that roof a really dark sort of brown gray sort of dirty grease color um, and that with um, some little rust powders would look really really nice so that was what uh, we were intending to do but I say it wouldn't, didn't show up too well so uh, so I changed my mind at the end so while the wheels are off we'll quickly give them a coat of the same color just for now we need something on that to uh, to get our weathering powders to adhere to and then anything that's left on that cream section we're just going to wipe back I'm not going to be too precise about it because uh, you know, it's just, it, this is just it's in service it's had a quick wipe as it goes along so I'm just kind of cleaning the patch in between and if, if there's anything left you know just catch around the edges then uh, and just make it look like it's been sort of cleaned And I'm just using on this this, this uh, thinners uh, acrylic thinners to help clean this back. So the couple of extra details I just want to work on, and that is uh, those little panel lines and the hinges around the doors. And we'll just uh, got a couple of little tricks, and we'll just make that uh, look a little bit better. So our next stage is to add uh, a pin wash to some of the uh, some of the panel lines around the doors. 
and we're using for this an oil paint this is straight from the tube this is um, a colour called ivory black and that's odorless in as and we're going to mix down a really really runny watery um, mix of this like a little wash but we're not going to slap it all on with it we're going to use it with a very fine brush to kind of target the areas we want to uh, to get the oils into the reason for doing this is just to uh, make those panel lines a little bit more obvious from a distance and give that sort of effect of it being a like a shadow because that's you're going to get a shadow in those panel lines there you don't need to use black I've just uh, mainly gone for that because it's uh, it's going to look more obvious on the uh, on the video here but you could equally use um, the same color from the roof like the brown uh, or the, so the brown gray on the roof or just just a brown color really whatever you whatever you choose um, but it dries fairly light because it's a really thin wash so uh, so black is what we're going for now don't worry too much about this uh, at this stage if you get paint um, on the outside of those um, panel lines so you can see where the where the brush touches you get a little uh, sort of blob so don't worry about that we'll clean that off very easily in a second so we're going to go all along the carriage just just dotting this in as we go Just do one side at a time and we'll clean back the, uh, the little marks and then we'll carry on. It's that last bit now. So now with a, uh, a clean brush, pop it into the uh, thinners, just make it wet clean it back on a cloth, we really don't want it soaking wet, we just need it to be sort of dampened with thinners. And just go over those marks where um, where the, the wash has gone outside of the panel line and it'll just, um, it'll just neaten that up a little bit. Now just make sure you keep on cleaning your brush as you go, just a little bit and then some clean thinners and then wipe it back on the tissue uh, otherwise you'll start transferring paint from one part to another and uh, that's what we uh, definitely don't want and we'll just continue around the whole model just uh, to clean it up as we go And one of the last bits I want to do on this, uh, on the sides, is just to add a bit of colour onto those hinges, just to make them stand out a little bit. So uh, some sort of grease colour, we're just using a grey here. Um, you could mix it up with a, with a brown, just to make it a slightly different shade, but it's such a tiny detail. And we're just going to catch the edge of those, um, of those hinges, just to make them stand out just a little tiny bit. So a few people ask the um, particular um, weathering powders that I use. So these are the main ones that are always in the in the palette. So if you need to, uh, maybe just pause it and you can write these down if you um, if you want to use the exact colours that I do. I'll leave the colours in the description for you as well. 
So we're just going to add a bit of powders to the uh, to the wheel before we pop them back into place. I'm just using the uh, the dark brown and the and the lighter coloured rust just to make a sort of random um, random colour. The same on the other side as well, just to add a bit of texture and a bit of interest to the wheels. Obviously, do it the rest rest of the set. And then uh, on our a roof, so this is the final part of the roof. I just want to save this bit to, to the last. This is one of my favourite. I love doing this. This is a dry brushing. I'm um, sure you've used that technique before. The dry brushing is pretty much as it says on the tin. We are just going to put some paint on a brush and uh, then wipe it all off basically, and the brush will be virtually dry. So, tissue at hand or you can use a cloth or, um, or your shirt, whatever you whatever you got nearby. Just a little bit of paint on the brush, this is a nice flat brush. And then wipe back as much as you can and then uh, wipe it again because you never get it all off. Uh, which is exactly what we're after. And then very lightly, just a sort of flick it across and you can see it picks up those uh, those details. Uh, this is uh, is just, just practice on a few other bits if you get a moment, um, but this is an exceptionally light touch. And this particular colour then just gives us like um, like a worn effect, as if the paint or whatever on the roof has come off. You don't need to use silver. You could uh, do this with black or have a rust tone as well, whatever uh, you think looks appropriate for. The, uh, the model you're working on and just while I've got it at hand we'll do the same on the bug as well it just uh, brings out some of that detail we're going to obscure a lot of this with powders anyway but um, it just kind of uh, just just to make them pop out just a little bit I quite like it so our dark rust is our uh, main go-to rust powder on these uh, these bogies Now you can see we're not using a great deal of powder, so we just really don't want to touch it in, knock most of it off, and then uh, and then apply it to the model. Just be very careful with uh, how much powder to use. Use too much, it's uh, it can be a proper pain to get off. So just be uh, just be careful of that. We're using here in this middle part is our Humbrog Dark Earth. This would just be grimy. Um, you could use rust on here as well if you choose, I guess. But um, we're using dark earth on this one, and on that brake cylinder, and then on this uh, this bucket, we we'll do the same as well. Use the uh, the dark brown, the um, burnt umber. And the yellow ochre as well, um, which is quite a nice rusty colour. And that's it, we're done. There it is in its full glory. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, Dave, I hope this was useful. And anybody else that's asked for this video as well, don't forget you don't need to use airbrush. You can do nearly all of these stages just using your uh, your brush. Just uh, apply it very sparingly and uh, should be good to go. So thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you very, very soon back at Bunter's Yard.